Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a coined and curious volume of forgotten lore, while reading of subjects important and weighty, I came across this comment on the SQ-80, quote, How did you get the pulse width modulation sound from a fixed wave synth? Unquote. So to begin with, I'm exploring some of the SQ-80's capability with moving waveforms. The sync function always keeps oscillator 2 at exactly the same pitch as oscillator 1 by forcing oscillator 2's wave to start over from the beginning, no matter where it is in its cycle, every time oscillator 1's wave restarts. By keeping oscillator 2 tuned lower than oscillator 1, you end up looping some percentage of the original waveform. Any modulators applied to the pitch of oscillator 2 now become waveform modulators. This first patch starts with a square wave in oscillator 2. In Sonic's version, looks like it had some high-pass filtering done to it before they sampled it. That's why the tops and bottoms are not perfectly flat. Here the mod wheel is set up to lower the pitch by almost an octave. Now if we turn on sync, the mod wheel ends up changing the waveform to anything from a square wave to a very narrow pulse wave. This is actual pulse width modulation. By the way, the waveform they supply that's labeled pulse isn't even close. It actually fits better with a noise family of waveforms. If you're familiar with that song, you have my pity. Now here's the pulse width modulated by a low frequency oscillator. Now modulated by an envelope. The SQ-80's formant waves have resonant peaks that remain more or less consistent across the keyboard, so when they are synced and modulated, they can give us a wide range of wah-wah sounds. For example, here's the formant 1 wave. And formant 5. And formant 3. You can also stop moving waves anywhere along their adjustment range for all new static waveforms. Once you start doing that, you'll see that for all practical purposes, this synthesizer actually gives you hundreds of different fixed waveforms to work with. For some more examples of moving waves, here is clav. and string if I stop the adjustment at that particular point this new static waveform sounds like it might make an interesting organ sound harmonic loop and transient attacks categories of waves are given a much stronger sense of pitch when synced. Here is steam and steam synced. Next are some examples of finished patches based on moving waves. On this one, the mod wheel modulates the voice one waveform to give different vocal tonalities. (laughs) 
This next one uses a formant wave modulated by an LFO for an automatic wah-wah effect. Filter resonance is not used in this patch. <laughs> This one uses sync on the bell wave, modulated by an LFO using its noise waveform for a sample and hold sound. On this one, the sustained portion of the sound has a slight flanger effect from the bass two wave being modulated by an LFO that can be increased with a mod wheel. One very important application of moving waves is in recreating keyboard instruments that generate their sound from moving strings, tines, or reeds. Their waveform is always shifting and undulating. It never stays the same. With an envelope or an LFO, you can give a slow and subtle movement to the wave that helps the, trick the brain into thinking that it's being generated by something mechanical and not something electronic. Here's an electric piano patch with ordinary static waves. And here it is with moving waveform. So are you going to be stuck with just fixed waveforms? Quoth the SQ-80, never more. And now, for something completely different, the overflow mode. One of the biggest complaints about the ESQs and SQ-80 is that they have only eight note polyphony, which goes down to four notes if you layer sounds. Normally when you try to play more than eight notes, it steals away the oldest ones to use for the new ones. But if you hook up a second SQ-80 and set up the sounds exactly like on the first one, you can use overflow to make both of them act as if they were one SQ-80 that had 16 notes and 16 sequencer tracks. Once you play more than 8 notes from the first synth, it goes to the second synth for additional notes. And you're not limited to just two SQ-80s. Each additional one gives you eight more notes and sequencer tracks. The owner's manual does not give any maximum limit. Here's an example of 16 sequencer tracks, each activating a different patch at the same time. A single SQ-80 has a total of 24 audio oscillators. Using two like this gives you 48 oscillators to work with. This sound uses all of them. You're probably already aware that the sequencer is really handy for setting up a rhythm to practice or jam with. For an example, here's a simple beat I use for practicing my velocity-based sample and hold technique. uses just a few notes at a time, no problem. 
But if you're jamming with an organ or piano sound using chords, and you have a whole rhythm section accompanying you, the E note limit can catch up with you pretty easy. Overflow helps out with that problem. As an example, I'll close with an excerpt from a piano jamming sequence that even adds some horn parts after a bit. <laughs> 